Did anybody ever tell you that Lillian Gish was known as the first lady of American cinema for acting in 25 short films in just two years? And that is not even her biggest achievement. She had a lead role in the highest grossing movie in the silent era and was even nominated for an Academy Award. Here is everything you simply have to know about Lillian. To steal just a second more of your time before we start the video, if you are not subscribed to our channel, hit that subscribe button. We make fun videos about celebrities every single day. We promise you won't regret it. A childhood to remember. Lillian didn't have what one could say is a perfect childhood. When she was just a little girl, her father left her mother and her little sister, forcing her mother to pursue acting so she could provide for the family. Because they couldn't afford to have their own home, they traveled to East St. Louis to live with Lillian's aunt and uncle. There, her mother opened a candy kitchen, so Gish and her baby sister sold candy to people who were visiting the Majestic Theater right next to the candy shop. Her life of going to school with her baby sister and participating in plays shifted drastically when the family received news that Lillian's father's days were numbered. Without thinking twice about it, Lillian packed her bags and moved in with her father's brother to be close to him. Even though her father left the family when she was little, she stayed with her uncle and even attended a different high school until her dad passed away. The start of her career. While selling candy, Gish already did some acting on the side. In 1902, she performed on the stage for the first time, and in the following two years, toured in her first false step alongside her little sister and her mother. Now that's what we call a true family business. All things have to end someday, and so did Lillian's job of selling candy when the Majestic Theater burned down was over. The girls moved with their mother to New York City, and when they were introduced to their neighbor, Gladys Smith, who you might know under the name of Mary Pickford, Lillian's and her sister's life began to change. In 1912, Gladys introduced them to the famous director, D.W. Griffith, which got them a contract with Biograph Studios. If that isn't the best friend anyone can have to help you start your career, then we don't know who is. Working for Biograph Studios Before signing a contract to work for Biograph Studios and acting Griffin's films, so her first appearance on stage was in a short film, An Unseen Enemy. Gish was known for her determination and not stopping her work for anything in the world. Sadly, even though the act was admired, sometimes it can go too far. In 1913, while she was on set of A Good Little Devil, she collapsed due to anemia, but just days later continued acting as if nothing happened. Lillian did that a lot during her career, not caring enough for her health and knowing when to stop, and that showed when she was on set for Way Down East, where she had to act as if unconscious on an ice floe, going through so many takes, being so cold, Gish suffered permanent damage to her nerves in some of her fingers. No matter how amazing her performances were, we still think that no job should give you so much pain. So we hope that Gish's act can be a lesson for us all. We have to know when to stop. Leaving Griffith behind. Griffith was a director known to see the special talent in actors and use that talent to their advantage to make them the stars they deserve to be. His work definitely shows with Lillian, who appeared in 25 films in a short span of two years, making her so famous that she gained the title of the First Lady of American Cinema. Even though she loved working for Griffith, she decided to stop in 1925 so she could sign a contract with MGM. We think it was the right thing to do because working for the newly formed studio gave her a lot of creative freedom. Even back then, there was a rule that the better the star, the more they are paid. With the fame Lillian already had, MGM knew that they have to pay her well for her to stay, so they offered her what would today be $14.6 million for her to star in six movies. Lillian turned to offer down, saying that they should pay her less and use the rest of the money that they wanted to pay her to make better quality films and hire the best film crew they can for the films she acted in. What do you think of her offer? We think the move was smart. She knew that her acting was good enough to bring her loads of money, and as they always say, quality over quantity. Her love for the theater. Gish was one of those actresses that struggled when the talkies were introduced. Both her and the lovely neighbor that got her into the film industry, Mary Pickford, became less interesting for the audience when they started acting in sound films. The audience and the critics deemed their performance outdated and not interesting enough, saying that they will have to make more effort to not appear as silly on the screen. The directors, who cast Gish in their movies because they knew it would be successful, now struggled to include her in a way that the audience would care for her. One director went so far that he wanted to create a scandal on stage just so that the audience would fall in love with her again, but Lillian refused. Because of this stressful transition, Gish decided to go back and reinvoke her love for theater when she acted in plays for the majority of her 30s. Sometimes things don't go as we plan, and we never know when our success can end. So having a plan B like Lillian had is always a good idea. The Special Academy Award 
Gish returned in front of the screen in 1946 when she appeared in the movie Duel in the Sun, for which she was nominated for the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actress. The critics said that her performance in the movie reminded them of some of her earliest work and that perhaps she could re-establish her career. However, so late in her career, Lillian didn't have the same energy as she did before, so she only appeared in a film here and there, one of the most memorable being The Night of the Hunter. In the last three decades of her career, she mostly appeared in TV films and became one of the advocates for silent movies. She opened many screenings of old works and gave speeches about the movies as they were back in the day. For all her work, she got a special Academy Award for her contribution to movie development, and she even got a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The End of Her Career the last time we can see Lillian on screen is when she was 93 years old in the movie The Whales of August. The critics loved her performance so much that she received an award for the film. Some were even mad that she wasn't nominated for the Academy Award for it. But as we know by now, Lillian was humble and said that even though she is flattered, she doesn't think her performance was Oscar worthy. The last two words on the screen for Gish were good night. And we think that is a perfect phrase to say goodbye to her career after being on the scene for more than 70 years. No romance for the hardworking. With having such a flourishing career, Lillian never had the time to settle down and think about having a family, so she never married. Working with Griffith for so many years, there were a lot of rumors that they were more than friends, but she never mentioned anything or confirmed that the rumors are true, so we might never know what truly happened. Gish might never be married, but she has always stayed close with her sister and Mary Pickford, and we think that counts for something. To some people, friendship and family are just more worth their time. What do you admire most about Lillian, and what new things did you learn about her today? Leave us a comment down below and check out our channel for more amazing facts about celebrities.